Welcome to Carly Tackles making a flippable, sturdy workbench with a flip up side and removable drawer. To start the series, I'm going to walk you through how I made the top. I cut a full sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood into 6 pieces. Two of the 6 pieces measured 24 by 48 inches. To make the outside frame, I'll be using 2x4s. We will be running a metal pole down the middle of our workbench. The diameter of that pole will dictate the size of your other four pieces of plywood. The pole that I am using measures 1 and 3 8 inch in diameter. Our workbench will be a total of 3 inches thick. That's 4 3 quarter inch plywood stacked on top of each other. I also ripped my 2x4s to 3 inches, taking off that extra half inch so it would have the same thickness. I am cutting a notch into the frame to set the two sheets of plywood that measure 24 by 48 inches. My next step is to use a half inch rabbiting router bit on both sides of the frame. Because my plywood is 3 quarters inch thick and this is only a half inch rabbit bit, I have to make a pass and then adjust the rabbit bit a little bit higher so that I can take out a full 3 quarters inch. If you have a router table as pictured on the left, that would be the best way to do this. Using a straight router bit, you'll be able to take out 3 quarters inches in one pass. I did not have a router table at the start of this project, so I got the privilege of doing it both ways. Once I'm done making my cuts, I will use my scrap piece of plywood and measure to see how well it fits. When you finish taking out 3 quarters inch from the top and the bottom, your board should look something like this. Next, it's time to join your sheet of plywood and your frame. Instead of using pocket holes like you're about to watch me do, drill in screws from the outside in using a countersink drill bit. That's what I ended up doing after I did this. I moved the bench to the floor where I had more room and more clamps at my disposal. I had glued the top piece and the little notches to the frame and I let that dry. Now what I'm working on are my two pieces on the inside. And you'll see that I'm using that pipe as spacing. I had a small sample piece of that pipe to ensure that no matter where I put those boards, it had room to move. I let the diameter of the pipe determine the total thickness of the workbench. I knew I wanted 3 quarters inch on either side of the pipe, but I did not know the total thickness. Since the pipe measured 1 and 3 eighths of an inch, I decided that two sheets of 3 quarter inch plywood would be close enough to work for this. I kept those pieces clamped and let it dry overnight. Now you see me applying glue for the second set of inside plywood sheets. I'm still using my scrap piece of pipe to make sure that it fits in diameter and that none of these pieces happen to hang over a little extra. And if you notice my placement of my clamps, I'm clamping it against the frame as well as down into the frame. Once I finish applying all my clamps, I will let this dry overnight before removing them. Before attaching the final layer of plywood, I wanted to drill the hole in the frame for the pipe. It's a lot easier to line it up and measure it out when I can see the path that the pipe will go before putting it on the top. I'm using a speed square to help transfer my lines up to the frame so I can make a cutout. I'm also using my scrap 3 quarters inch plywood to make sure that I'm not cutting this hole too high or too low in the frame, keeping it exactly centered. To make this hole, I'm using a 1 and 3 eighths inch hole saw. You will need to cut this hole on both ends of the table. 
When you're finished, it should look something like this, and you should be able to do a little test run with your pipe and make sure that it goes all the way through, no catches. I kept the pipe in there on this next step. I'm applying the glue to add the top piece. I'm being very careful not to add the glue too close to the pipe so it doesn't fall in there and I have issues turning it. I'm also applying glue to the notch that we cut out in the frame. I'm making sure that I don't apply too much glue that it will squeeze out when I apply the top board. Making sure that the top board lines up with the 2x4s and everything smooth, I begin to start clamping it down into place. There's a saying that you can never have too many clamps in your workshop. And on this project, I found out that is totally true. I wish I had more, even though you can see I have plenty here. Once it's all clamped down, it needs to dry overnight before starting their next step. I drew out a grid on my workbench for dog holes. I measured in three inches from the side and then from there every four inches I made a mark for the dog hole. So we have like a four by four grid going on here. From the research that I found, three inches or four inches are common spacing for dog holes. I'm going through very thick material so I am using a hammer drill. Um, just because it's a lot of work for a little power drill from Ryobi go through. In fact, I tried it and it started smoking. So there is a sign to stop and to get a little bit more powerful of a tool, which I did here. The other thing I would recommend is on your drill bits, you really don't want to drill all the way through your workbench because we want both sides of this to be a workable surface. So when you drill through from one end, you can have tear out at the other. So what I'm doing is my drill bit has a little circle at the very top of it that allows me to at least get a center hole on the other side that I can go back and flip over and drill in. I put a little piece of tape at the right depth that I need to drill down to enough to give me a little hole, but not to tear out the full opening on the other side. And then that way when I'm done, I'll flip it over and I'll put, line up this little center guy with the hole I drilled and I'll be straight up and down on these holes. So that's what I'm going to finish doing here is finish drilling out these holes and then I will zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. I flip the workbench over and I'm starting to work from the other side. I'm locating the little holes that I made from drilling from the top and now I'm drilling them back down the other way to help reduce my tear out. Now that I have both sides of the holes drilled out, I'm going to take my router with a round over bit and actually smooth out the edges of the holes. Now, one thing to note is I barely have this deep. I just have enough so I can take off a little bit of the rounding edges, but not fully up that it takes out notches of my board. This next step is optional. I am going to be adding T-tracks to one side of my workbench. I am using my router and this Bora clamp that you can clamp to your piece of material and it will help you cut a straight line. To cut the groove that I need, I am using a 3 quarter inch straight router bit at 3 eighths of an inch deep. I am also using a scrap piece of T-Track to test my groove to make sure it is deep enough and wide enough for it to fit. Before I finish sanding and preparing to stain the workbench top, I wanted to drill in the holes that I'll be using to stabilize the workbench in its position. Now we have the hole already drilled for the pole which will rotate it and be able to allow it to flip back and forth. 
but I wanted to use something strong and sturdy to hold it in its position. So I'm going to be using hitch pins. These are 5 8 inch of diameter and I believe about 6 inches long. So long enough to go through my 4x4 post and yet have plenty of it inserted into the workbench to have it stabilized. Now I'm doing two of these on each side to help hold it in position and then the other two on the other. So I used a 5 8 drill bits because these are 5 8 inch drill or hitch pins and started drilling into the boards and I only drilled as far as what I needed which I measured to be about three and a half inches needs to go into the board and then I put a little tape on the actual hitch pin to test the hole before I finished up. So each one of these will be able to hold our hitch pins and lock our workbench in place. Now I'm going to finish sanding and stain the top. I used a black cherry stain. I couldn't resist a little pink and purple in a workbench, and then I applied coats of polyurethane to help protect it. Now it's time to install the T-Tracks. Always start with the inner section first. Now I'm using a self-centering drill grit to pre-drill the holes into the wood. These T-Tracks already have the holes drilled through the metal. And then I'm just using a Ryobi impact drill, which is overkill, but to place the screws into the workbench. Once you have the inner sections in place, you can start placing the other ends of the T-Track in there and measuring where you need to make your cuts. You can use a miter saw to make your cuts. T-Tracks allow you to slide clamps, stops, and other accessories along the track so you can move them easily along your workbench. Our top piece is now complete. In our next video, I'll show you how to make the legs and assemble the top to the legs. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, Carly Tackles DIY, Tools and Gadgets, Tips and Tricks. Make sure you hit the bell so you get notified when I release new material.